I fixed a nice red uh, slideshow for uh, because it's the first red institute I'm working for. Before all my institutes were blue, and I made a nice red style sheet. Uh, so, but I think I will make the Bachtesche here University logo just red, and I will leave it. I like it now. So, anyway, huh? It matches the seats. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, well, for introduction, um, in Western music, there have been some studies um, which looked at in how far meter is supported by note onsets, for example. There's, for example, this study by Palmer and Krumhansel from 1990, where they counted um, onsets where they occur in a meter, and they observed in how far these occurrences support the metrics, metrical structure. And as you can see in this figure from their publication, uh, we have the theoretical position or the theoretical weights as dotted lines and what they measured as black lines. And uh, they, fo they found quite a high correlation between uh, which weights are given in theory by the meter and where do node onsets occur actually. The same uh, holds, or to some extent, holds for another issue regarding meter, which is syncopation. Well, syncopation, uh, let me just give a, a, a try to define it a little bit. There's a, a nice and short uh, definition in the Harvard Dictionary of Music, which says that syncopation is a temporary contradiction of the prevailing meter. This can happen, of course, in various forms. For example, you can superimpose a different meter to another one, or you can place single note events in a, in, a, in a way which contradicts to the meter. I can give you one example for Hemiola, as a friend of classical music. I found this one. So you have an underlying beat, and uh, a theme which takes another meter. So two meters are basically superimposed. That's one kind of possible syncopation. We are going to look here more at the second type of syncopation, as it also has been done more in literature on Western music. So single note events being placed in an unusual manner. I will also give a short example for that. Um, this has, for example, been investigated uh, by Euron and Oman in 2006, where they took a relatively large data set of American popular music and they investigated in how far syncopation uh, rose or developed maybe throughout centuries or throughout decades. Um, and they found a significant rise in syncopation, which is quite uh, understandable because this period is basically the rise of uh, the beginning of jazz music with ragtime, where basically syncopation was more and more developed as uh, as a tool to give some spice to to the actual rhythm performance. One uh, study we did, um, and which we will present in this year's uh, Izmir, related to my previous work at uh, Inesk in Porto was uh, we investigated a large data set for uh, the appearance of syncopation, again uh, on symbolic data. And we found that actual, actually syncopation, if encountered, is widely distributed among various uh, voices. So you see on this uh, um, axis, you see different instruments and highlighted moments a, a long time indicate that there's a high syncopation. I can just give you uh, the sound example related to that one. It should be that. So it starts only with one voice, the bass. There is some syncopation already. 
Then we get some more syncopation from drums, from the various elements of the drums. And now it gets most clearly when uh, the horns come in, into play. It's like they, they put a strong stress between the beats, basically. So that's basically the kind of syncopation we are going to investigate on Turkish music. This sounds rude, but as we will see, it is not. Um, okay, an example, we already had this. Uh, I will just uh, skip quickly through it. You have a percussion, or you have the usuls as a, a description, basically, not only of the meter, but it gives some kind of a description of how the meter uh, develops and how uh, the rhythmic content of a composition shall develop. I can, this exact sounds like that. Tek, du, tek, tek. So that's it. And a composition uh, based on that sounds like this. Dum, tek, tek, dum, tek, dum, tek, tek, dum, tek, dum, tek, tek, dum, tek, dum, tek. Did you notice something? The melody of the singer was not on the beginning. There was something. So maybe it's not so rude to, to look at syncopation in that music where at least literature does not refer to it almost at all. Our setup is we had a look at uh, a set of symbolic data. All of them are uh, Scharke and uh, Türkü form, so uh, either tr uh, traditional folk melodies or composed uh, Makam music songs, vocal all of them. And we have the main melody of all these songs in MIDI. You see the distribution uh, uh, among several um, usuls, the number of notes, and some uh, the, the lengths, lengths of the, of the usuls. So for example, the exact we saw before is usually then described by nine lengths and the typical mertebe, which, which defines its basic tempo is usually for the AXAC, for the normal form, an 8. So we have a 9-8 for AXAC, for example. Our setup was we took the melodies of all compositions and we kind of sampled them in time in a resolution of 16th notes. Because we have MIDI, we can easily do that. Then for each usul, the number of node events and their average dur durations are determined for each bin at this resolution. So imagine you have a, met uh, a rhythmic cycle which is divided into 16th nodes and we count, let's say, the onsets in each of these bins and we also register how long are the durations in each of these bins. And we also applied one algorithm which we propose now in Izmir for measuring of syncopate, syncopation or for detection of syncopated events. I will not go into detail of this algorithm because explaining that stuff uh, takes too long, but you can refer to the paper. And uh, we will have a look again at the distribution of syncopated events along the rhythmic cycle to see if there's something systematic, something interesting going on. The results for the node locations, we have correlation coefficients which are significant but tend to be lower than the ones observed um, in studies for Western music. For example, in this study uh, I present, I mentioned uh, from Kum Hansel and colleagues, they uh, refer to significantly higher correlation values. Um, this is uh, basically 
the, my, one reason for that might be that uh, no soul gives a very sparse description. It is only a, a sequence of syllables which define some metrical weights, but that of course does not mean that in between of them there is nothing. What is very interesting is that if you look at these figures, that high, uh, you see in figures A and B, you see the theoretical weights, at least as we can obtain them from Musiki or Kur, as they are given there. And a comparison of these weights uh, with what we measured. And you can see that in these examples and in all other occurrences, we, in all other, other assaults, we observe that theoretically strong beats are also, uh, are also stressed in the compositions, but the stress appears to be stronger on the secondary ones, on the not so strong ones. So for example, you see uh, for the Aksak that um, the one, two, three, four, fifth stroke in the theory is quite a bit lower, but the appearances at this moment, at this time instance we measured, were quite high. So there's a deviation towards the top for the less strong uh, beats in the usul. For durations, interestingly, the correlations are even higher. Here we can see that clearly what we have in an usul, when we have uh, a strong stress in the, in the usul, that usually these strong stresses are correlated very strongly with higher note durations. And regarding syncopation, we saw that among these six usuls, some have a clear systematic behavior related to syncopation. What does this uh, systematic mean? It means that syncopation appears stronger in the first part of a rhythmic cycle which, for example, we had this Aksak example in the beginning, where you saw the singer, the mel or the, let's say the melody of the composition, puts its first note after the rhythmic cycle starts, which is something which I did not discuss with mus musicians, but basically that's why I, I started this study, because as a musician I observed that. So there might be a stroke by a percussive instrument, but the melody of the composition uh, comes in later. And which is uh, something else which is very interesting is that syncopated events seem to be longer. So while in Western music what we measured is that syncopations are usually eighth notes, so we have quite fast rhythmic events which contradict. While in Turkish Makam music, what we observed is that the durations are usually longer, usually about a quarter note. So, and interestingly, the significantly highest syncopated usul is Duyek, which in discussions with musicians is referred to as a syncopated usul, something which you rarely find in literature, but somehow in parallel to Western music where syncopation has been investigated now recently, but among musicians it was always clear that there is syncopation. It's somehow something similar that there is some mentioning of syncopation in theory, but among musicians it appears to be clear that if you ask about syncopation in Duyek, at least from the few talks I had now, it's clear the, the one answer I obtained was Yes, syncopation is everywhere. Just take Duyek and look at that. So that's quite interesting. So the conclusions are that note locations and durations support the meter in Makam music. And um, the cor correlation is lower than 
the ones, the correlation numbers are lower than the ones reported for Western music. And even though the term syncopation has ha is hardly ever encountered in literature, it seems to play an important role in specific usuls. So, as a conclusion of that, it seems to be advisable to, to use these aspects when we want to process usuls in whatever way also an audio. So we know that in the compositions this is there. In some kind of form this should appear also when we do some audio processing. And also what is interesting and important is that for a preliminary classification task which I describe in the workshop paper, the results are better when I use patterns which I learn from the data. They are better than the classification results I obtain, I obtain from theoretical descriptions of those soul. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Questions? <laughs>